I'm here in uh, Wilmington now. I've just got to the hotel where packet pickup is. Uh, there's the sign for it right there. Um, so I'm gonna go get my stuff and get checked in. I gotta say, this is a uh, pretty auspicious bib number. We'll see how it does for me. All right, so I'm checked into my hotel room and I might take one out of Kofuzi's playbook and do a little uh, hotel room tour here because this is a pretty cool hotel room or a loft as they call it. I'm staying in the Aloft by Marriott. So, you know, here, my king size bed, entertainment system and all of that. And then kind of dig this decor. Um, nice shower area. I don't think we need to look at the toilet and all that, but I mean, it's pretty swanky. And uh, then if I go over to the window here, first of all, it has this like literally digital print. Those are numerals. Um, but then a great view that right there is the USS North Carolina BB-55, the battleship for which the battleship Half Marathon is named. Uh, and I've been there before. I'll probably take a tour sometime either later today or maybe tomorrow before I leave town. Uh, it's a really cool place to visit, especially if you're into naval history, or even if you're not. And there's Wilmington. That's the race course right there that that car is driving on. Uh, starts here. Pow! Yep, sure enough. Okay, so this isn't exactly a flat lay because there isn't so much room for all of that, but here's all the stuff that I am going to wear tomorrow at the Battleship Half Marathon. Of course, as always, I'm wearing a reckless running singlet. Here's my bib. Like I said, that's a great bib number. Let's see if it works out. Uh, and Gingy uh, lightweight toe socks. Um, I'm gonna wear some ear warmers and some cotton gloves. I never get the expensive gloves. I always wear these cheap cotton gloves that I can get at the grocery store um, because they work just as well and I can throw them away and not really be missing them all that much. I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna wear a ball cap. If it's actively raining, I might wear the ball cap just to keep the rain out of my face. Has been raining off and on today. Um, I have the Rabbit Speedster shorts, um, just because I've been having a lot of luck in races with those and it'll be good for the temperature. It should be about 48 or 49 degrees Fahrenheit. I guess that's, what is that? That's like seven or eight degrees Celsius. Um, and then I'm gonna race in the Hoka Rocket X2 tomorrow. Uh, you guys know I love the Endorphin um, Elite by Saucony, uh, and that one just barely beat out this one, which beat out all of the others as far as my uh, marathon shoe hopefuls for Chicago. So I'm going to give this one a good test on a, on a properly fast race course. Uh, we'll see if it's fast. It's uh, potential to be windy. I generally don't do all that well in the wind, uh, but I have a couple of goals that I will talk about. right across the river from the USS North Carolina right now. And I'm not sure if you can see people moving around on it just to give you scale as to how large the ship is. It's over 800 feet long. Um, I guess that's over 250 meters. Um, but yeah, we'll get a closer view of it later. That's one of the bridges. I think the second bridge I'll have to cross tomorrow. That's the third bridge I'll have to cross tomorrow in order to get back on this side. This is uh, well, this is where the starting chute is. Well, it's race morning and I'm all kitted up, almost, uh, enjoying my coffee and my bagel. And I realize the video is not all that good, but you can see the wind and the rain. Uh, along that standing water in the parking lot down there. So it's going to be a fun day weather-wise. All right, I've had my breakfast. I've had my coffee. I think I've gone to the bathroom enough times. Uh, it is 
actively raining out there and luckily I'm just about a quarter mile from the start finish line of the race and also thought to bring my thermal mylar blanket from Chicago um, which will be good before the start um, so yeah we'll see how we do in this weather all right I am on my warm-up right now I just ran the first mile of the course and now I turned around, I'm running back towards the start. The first mile is going to be pretty challenging. There's a couple of sneaky uphills uh, to get from Water Street back up to Front Street, which is a little bit higher than the start line. And the first mile is going to be into the wind. Probably the first mile and a half is going to be like that. So. It will have to be a conservative start. Maybe not a day for even pacing. It might be a day for racing for place. We'll, we'll see what happens. Turning around and running with the wind, it feels great. As you can tell, it's actively raining. I don't think that'll be as much of an issue. The footing is a little bit slick. And uh, I will certainly be able to report out on how well these Hoka Rocket X2 do in slick conditions. All right, all right. Here's the uh, Cape Fear River behind me. And uh, that's the battleship right behind me. You can tell what kind of morning it is. If you can see the clouds moving, they're cooking pretty quickly. So like I said, the first mile is gonna be into a headwind. That'll be fun. At least I won't need sunglasses today, right? I'm going back to class here. Yes, and he's going to win it all. We're going to try. We're going to give it a shot. on mile three. These bridges are no joke. Slippery and wet and squeaky. Mile six. Way behind pace. And I'm just trying to think about masters. to go. I'm going gradual uphill into the wind. It's CCMF time. I'm hemorrhaging pace. There's the mile 12 marker. Just 
just over a quarter mile left. difficult than I expected. Well, I don't know what I expected, but um, it was a, not an awful course, but it's harder than you'd expect coming to the coast. Um, the bridges took a lot out of me at the beginning, and they're not all that bad. They just took a lot out of that pace. The, the headwind was killer uh, in the first mile and a half, and in the last mile and a half god that was awful i was having a hard time keeping it in the high sixes just running into that wind when i was depleted and it was gentle uphill as well ah but uh 122 mid i think maybe 122 high uh i'm pretty sure i don't know it's hard to see who was on the course but i'm pretty sure that's got me masters so definitely found out early on I was gonna be racing for place, not for pace today, not for a time goal. And I'm all right with that, because you know, it's fun. I'm gonna do a cool down, I guess, get some coffee. Ooh, just got back into my room, still very much actively raining and windy. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can take a warm shower before I can go back out there in the rain for the awards ceremony, and we'll see how I did. Let me see, I got, about an hour, a little less than an hour before awards. Maybe I can uh, get some warm food in me too. Whew. All right, I've had a shower and gotten freshened up. Uh, about ready to go over to awards, but I figure since I'm gonna be running short on time to um, check out afterwards, I'm gonna do my quick shoe talk now. Hoka Rocket X2. Um, did pretty well today, I would say, as well as anything can do in these conditions. Um, you know, uh, outsole shows a little bit of wear. I think these are probably close to 80 miles now. I don't know what, what the mileage is on them now. I'll probably find it on Strava and put it right up here or something. Um, anyway, uh, did pretty well. A little bit squeaky on some of the, uh, uh, slippery surfaces. Um, was it a little bit slick? Yeah. I don't know if there's any particular shoe that would have had really good purchase there, but I didn't really find myself out of control a lot, except kind of on the cobblestones very much at the, uh, uh, a little bit, you know, towards the end in, in the last quarter mile there. Although I think a lot of people were having trouble there. They were uneven and they were slick. Um, squeaky, uh, I wouldn't say it sheds water awesomely, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure that any shoe, see they're still wet. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know that any shoe would have not been waterlogged today. I didn't feel waterlogged. I didn't feel like my feet were squishing uh, the whole time. And I certainly felt the same level of response throughout them the whole way. Uh, kind of that somewhere between a Vaporfly and an Endorphin Pro 3 with the level of bounce and the level of forgiveness. Um, definitely still an aggressive shoe uh, for this kind of pace. I think it's Great for half marathon, um, great for marathon. Might even t take it to a 10K, but I'm, I'm happy with how they uh, performed today. And I'm glad that I had something with a little bit more of a constrictive upper to keep everything locked in. Um, again, like this upper, a lot of people don't like Hoka uppers. If, you, if the upper works for you, then this is fantastic. If your feet don't agree with the shape of, uh, of Hoka shoes, then it may not be the best option for you, but for me, it's pretty good. Like I said, that was almost my Chicago shoe before I went with the Endorphin Elite. I'm kind of glad I didn't wear the Endorphin Elite today. I don't know how it would have done in the rain. Also, I really like those shoes and I don't want to mess them up. I really like the Hoka's too, but you know, I, I feel like the first run I had in these a while ago, I stepped in mud anyway, so they've kind of already been blooded. Anyway, uh, that's my quick shoe talk. Um, and I'm going to get on over to awards. I just checked the results online and I am indeed a first overall masters. So I'm going to go collect that 
All right. Behind Bye. him from Denver, North Carolina, with a finish time of one hour, 11 minutes and 25 seconds, 527 per mile for 24-year-old Beck Classy. Today. With a finish time of 122.49, 619 per mile for 43 year old Cornelius, North Carolina resident Chaz Willman. Okay, so I just checked out of the hotel and I'm hanging out in the, uh, the lobby, bar, coffee shop area. And I'm just going to do a quick uh, race recap. There's a dog down here. I'm going to do a quick uh, race recap. Um, so as I've already said, the headwind was killer today. The weather was not on anyone's side. Um, the first mile and a half was into a headwind, especially once we, especially after that first half mile, once we got out of the buildings area on, you know, Water Street and on Front Street, and then headed toward the first bridge, we were just kind of blasted with the headwind. Um, it was sustained, you know, 10 to 15 miles an hour, but then with some gusts that would hit us once we got on the bridge. Uh, taking the first left, getting us out of the wind was nice, but then there was a short out and back, and uh, that's where I got some pictures of uh, Beck and of Troy, another guy who's local to where I'm from, uh, on the out and back. And of course, on the out and back, once we came back, we were back into the headwind again, and then the rain had picked up a little bit, as, as had the wind, and it was just, you know, pelting me right in the face. But I had to wear my hat backwards, otherwise it would fly off my head. Uh, after that out and back, we kind of got out of the wind for a little while, and I was just trying to maintain as close as I could to pace. Um, the second bridge uh, was a little bit more steep, um, and that's when I started saying that these bridges were real. Um, Getting to the third mile there, I was, could tell I was getting behind pace for what was my goal time. I thought it would have been great to get close to 80 minutes today, but around mile three, mile four, I knew that was out of the window. So I started uh, racing for place uh, then, just trying to keep all the other old guys behind me. And uh, I didn't know where they were because uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell if someone's 40 years old or not. I don't know if I look 43 or not. Uh, I don't know if I look older or younger. Anyway, um, yeah, so getting on the third bridge, you know, around mile four, four and a half or so, that one was also a little bit tough. And it had a little bit of uh, slippery footing. That's where there was a sign that said slippery when wet. Um, my shoes were really squeaky there too, for some reason on that surface. Um, it was more of like a hard pavement rather than asphalt. Um, took a little exit ramp that was down and around like a 270 degree exit ramp and had about a mile and a half of straight uh, southbound running towards the park uh, and that was good because I was able to get some pace back but still I was doing like kind of goal pace with a little bit of a tailwind and starting to feel a little bit you know tired from the effort I had put in before and I was just thinking man, I'm gonna have to run this way into a headwind at the end of the race. I was not looking forward to that. Once we got into the park, there were all of about, well, I don't know, it's from mile, it's from about the 10K mark until about, you know, mile 11 or so. So it was a good five miles inside that park, which is a really cool park. It's a really, it was a nice place to run. It was really scenic. Um, and uh, I had some people to pace off of. Uh, Cam, who was a young runner, who you might have seen in the uh, black and white singlet and shorts. I think he was just out for a long run uh, because he didn't look to be putting in the effort that I was. Um, and then a couple of other runners that were trading places here and there. But other than that, it was pretty sparse. I was happy to have at least one person to run with. Um, anyway, um, I was maintaining what was about a 6.15 pace by the mile markers, and I thought, well, that's okay. You know, maybe I can get in under 82 or something like that, or 82 low, 81 high, 82 low. Um, but then once I broke out of the park and started running that last mile and a half uh, uphill into the wind, steady, you know, false flat uphill into the wind, then I started hemorrhaging pace and I knew that I was going to be lucky to get under 83. Um, once we got into downtown Wilmington uh, and took a, a left off that main road into kind of the 
the last couple hundred meters, there were cobblestones. Um, and I had walked along that path before. I knew the cobblestones were there, but running on them on tired legs, I was just like, oh, the, the footing was tricky. It was slick, it was uneven. And I was like, I just wanna run fast to the finish. Anyway, finished in official time, 122.49, so 82.49, um, which I can't be upset with given the conditions. Uh, it was faster than I ran at, you know, craft beer half marathon, which was kind of a short course, and I think was an easier course, and that was uh, about six months ago. So, coming off of my Chicago fitness, you know, five weeks after Chicago, I'm, I'm not upset with that. I think, had I better conditions, I don't know if I would have broken 80, but I might have been in the 81 lows. Um, anyway, uh, I, I won Masters by a lot so um i don't know what a lot is a couple minutes um i was happy with that that was kind of my other goal was to try and take home that i knew i wasn't going to get on the overall podium because there are usually people there in the um, in the high 60s low 70s you know for, for finishing time there so i'm happy with where i'm at uh first masters uh 75 dollar gift card to fleet feet in wilmington that's not too bad yeah. Um, and uh, maybe I'll hang out at the battleship later. We'll see. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications.